My name is Lewis Dawson. Uh, I want to uh, share with you some uh, my meditation on this Sunday school lesson, uh, the parable of two debtors. The first thing I have found helpful is to read verses uh, 36 through 39 uh, of, of Luke chapter 7, which is the paragraph before today's uh, lesson in verses 40 through 50. Uh, the, the first paragraph uh, is an indication of the uh, setting and uh, as to Jesus being a guest in the house of Simon, who is a Pharisee. If you can believe that, the Pharisee actually invited Jesus to go home with him for dinner. Uh, and in that, uh, in that setting, there is a very sinful woman, well known in the community for her uh, sin, which was evidently very public. She comes in and she washes the feet of Jesus with her tears. She kisses his feet and she uh, con con conveys the customs of her society, which Simon had not carried out himself when Jesus came into his house. Uh, there are two people in this passage of scripture other than Jesus and some other invited guests around the table as well. But there are two key people which is the point of this parable that Jesus says, the parable of two debtors. And that uh, parable is recorded for us beginning in verse 40 and following with Jesus' response. Now, one of the things that stands out to me is throughout this entire passage, the setting beginning in verse 36 going through 50, there is a thread of thoughts of what people are thinking that is here. What is within their mind, some that is not expressed, as in uh, Simon who is just thinking to himself, uh, the rest of the uh, guests who express their thoughts to one another. Uh, and Jesus uh, asked the very important question to Simon after he uh, speaks this parable of two debtors who have been forgiven uh, of their debt. And Jesus asked Simon, what do you think about this? <laughs> which one was forgiven and which one loves most? And uh, meanwhile, this sinful woman is washing the feet, kissing the feet of Jesus, and anoints him with a very expensive perfume. That is the whole point of this parable, the contrast of Simon's action and the woman's action. So you want to take note of the contrast that is here between Simon's uh, treatment of Jesus and the woman's treatment of Jesus. 
And as Jesus having asked Simon, what do you think? What do you say is the one who loves most? Jesus says uh, to Simon, uh, do you see this woman? Do you see this woman? You see what she has done for me. And to Simon, he speaks of her spiritual condition. Jesus says to Simon, her sins have been forgiven. Note that. Her sins have been forgiven. Spoken to Simon, who thought about the woman in her immorality as he knew it, as he thought about it. So the point of the parable is the contrast that Jesus makes, not just with two debtors, but through that parable, he is making a contrast for Simon to consider himself in contrast to the immoral woman. Now, the significance of Jesus' statement, her sins have been forgiven, implies her sin has already been forgiven before she came into your house. You thought she was in one condition of immorality, and the reality is that she has already been forgiven of all her sins. Her sin has been forgiven. In the New Testament, uh, that verb form is a perfect tense. Completion of, of the action that has already taken place. Now, there are those who understand that uh, Jesus has already for forgiven her of her sin at some other point in the past. There is the temptation to think of, a G of this woman sins have been forgiven applies to the fact that she has come and, and in love, in great love, washed his feet, combed him with her, um, washed his feet and dried his feet with her hair, kissed his feet as the custom of greeting with a kiss in that society and anointing him not with the traditional oil but with very expensive perfume that her having been forgiven is the result of her action. That couldn't be for that is an act of love, but it is also an act of work on her part. And as we know from many passages in the New Testament, forgiveness by God's grace and our faith is not based on something we've done. It's done on something God has done and Jesus is bearing testimony to the Simon, to Simon the Pharisee, that her sins have been forgiven. So sometime we know not of in the Bible, there's been a, an encounter with God, an experience with God already. And she is coming now that Jesus 
can be approached in a public setting to demonstrate her gratitude for the forgiveness of her much sin. Jesus then closes out the, this passage of Scripture by saying to the woman, your sins have been forgiven. And he said to her, he said to her, the last verse in the chapter, verse 50, he said to her, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. For me, that last verse is not just a add on to the conversation with Simon and, and with this woman who has come demonstrating her, her love for God, for Jesus. It is Jesus' statement to her, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Go in peace. For me, that is a very meaningful, significant passage and statement from Jesus of his care for her, his love for her. Go in peace. You have already been forgiven for your sins have been forgiven, he says to her. You have already been forgiven. Your faith saved you when you responded at some point in the past to the wonder of God's grace. Now that you have been forgiven, go in peace. Now, the Apostle Paul understood that from a personal standpoint. He was forgiven on the road to Damascus of all his sins, which included giving his consent and holding the coats of those who murdered uh, Stephen, one of the early deacons in the church in Jerusalem. And the result of Jesus coming to him in a very moving experience on the road to Damascus and having his sins forgiven and the joy that he came to know and the great peace that he had invading his heart he testifies on many occasions and he says to the, the congregation of Christians in one church by letter dwell on these things think on these things and the things that Paul bears testimony for Include peace. Go in peace. Don't dwell now that you have been forgiven. Don't dwell, he says to the woman, on the past, on the things you regret that you have sinned, on the things from which you cannot really ever keep 100% from coming into your mind. But when they do, remember the peace that passes all understanding. For God has forgiven you, and he is always with you. So, give thought and think about this. You have been forgiven. Don't dwell on the past. Go in peace, the peace which passes all understanding.
is yours. 